Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to take a look at these really very, very nice set of headphones, the FIO FT5 Planar Magnetic Headphones. So sit back, relax, and we'll discuss these really comfortable, good-sounding headphones. Old Guy Hi-Fi, the melody sweet. Modern set, make your life complete. From vintage vibes to the new elite. Old Guy Hi-Fi can't be beat. So what are the FIO FT5s? Well, it's a open back planar magnetic headphone, sits at the top of the FIO headphone line. They retail for about $450 as of the date of the recording of this video. Um, specifications are seven Hertz to 40,000. It is 96 dB sensitive, um, and it is a 36 ohm load to drive. Now they will handle the power up to 2000 milliwatts. Um, very well constructed. We're gonna talk about the, the planar magnetic drivers in just a second, but it is a magnesium frame, very solid, very well constructed, feels good and tight, not flimsy in any way, shape or form. Good headband, good clamping force. I had no trouble wearing these for long periods of time. One of the things I appreciated was they do give you two sets of pads. So I have the velour pads on it, but they do give you a pleather set of pads. They also, and this is, I thought was a nice touch, is they give you this really lovely leather case to hold everything, all your adapters and cords and all that. And speaking of cords, unlike some other headphone companies, they give you a fully balanced cord. So you get 4.4 Pentagon, you get the XLR adapter. In the case was the 6.3 millimeter adapter. And the other thing I really like about it on the ends, the 3.5 millimeter ends going into the headphone cups, they're clearly illuminated or enumerated or indicated right and left, which is great for me because I'm blind and can't see. And that's the other thing I like too is the ear pads on the inside tell you which is left and right. Oh, sorry, I can't even get it the right way up. Left and right, because again, I get confused. Anyway, so they, the headphones themselves use a 90 millimeter planar magnetic driver. Now, planar magnetic drivers live kind of in between a dynamic driver, which is what we know is a conventional speaker cone, and an electrostatic driver, which would be something kind of on the, uh, uh, akin to like a Magnapan, you know, their big electrostatics, the 30 point whatever or like Apogee speakers, or there's some other electrostatics out there. Um, so anyway, the planar magnetic, unlike a dynamic driver, which is driven from a voice coil in the center of it, and obviously you've got a cone shape and it's held in place by a surround. Because that pistonic motion, speakers work, all speakers work by compressing or rarefying the air next to their diaphragm, their cone or their diaphragm. And so when you're driving it from the center, obviously it's not an even drive across the whole surface of the cone. So you can get these phase distortions and breakup nodes across the cone. And in home speakers, you'll see it all the time. They're engineering all sorts of new materials, you know, aluminum this and polypropylene that, and they put, you know, ridges and ribs and, and, and patterns in the cone to help try to break up those distortions. Well, with a planar magnetic, the whole diaphragm is driven. So it's a six micron thick film and on it is etched a aluminum silver voice coil. And so the whole voice coil is the entire surface or the back surface of the diaphragm. And so you're driving the entire diaphragm from its entire surface. So you don't get those breakup modes. Now that the diaphragm lives in a set of magnets in the case of the FIOS, it's 20 neodymium magnets. There are 11 on the inside and nine on the outside. So planar magnetics give you super low distortion. They're very fast, so they can do really good on bass, um, it, it just depending on the design, and this does really well on bass. They can be super detailed, very airy sounding, very wonderful small details, micro details, things like that. I think planar magnetics, on the whole do a better job than almost any other dynamic headphone I've ever heard. So how did I test these? Well, for the most part, I tested them and it's a little bit hard to see. With the FIO K9 AKM balanced headphone amp deck, this thing is a remarkable piece. Linear power supplies, really well constructed, powerful. Gosh, it's really good. And I used it as just a deck. You saw, you saw the review of it. So driving these, it was wonderful. I did for a time just for fun, because I love the sound of it. I use the Sparkos Gemini headphone amp too, because it's got a tube in it. But for my critical reviewing, I did use the K9 AKM. So I had, I listened to it for long periods of time. And it, again, really comfortable headphone. I had no issues with, you know, my ear hitting the inside or anything like that. So what I, the recordings I used, well, the first one I used was this recording from Rufus featuring Shaka Khan, 1973, called 
Red X to Rufus. Now, this is a wonderful album. I think this is their second album or maybe their third album. Shaka Khan is, I think, 20 years old when they recorded this in 73. Her voice has that dynamicism and energy and kind of throw caution to the wind sort of sense you get with youthful singers, somebody who's maybe not as refined their voice or been so practiced or kind of, you know, uh, used to doing it all the time. And obviously, you know, practice makes perfect. There's a rawness to it. There's an edge to it. There's an immediacy to it. There's a kind of, as I said, youthful exuberance to it. And it's just wonderful. One of the great recordings on it is called You Got the Love. And it was written, co-written by uh, Ray Parker Jr. And you remember Ray Parker Jr. from Ghostbusters. Um, great song, great funk, great, just a wonderful funky rock sound of, of Rufus. And kind of at the same time you had P-Funk and the Parliaments and all those guys. This is kind of more mainstream funk, more kind of, uh, soul funk as well. Really, really good. Now, the standout albums on this are, or standout record recording on this is Tell Me Something Good. And that was a gift from Stevie Wonder to Shaka Khan. He happened to be in the studio and I don't know where it was, whether it was Detroit or whether it was LA. And he gave her the song and she wanted her to perform it one way and he wanted it wanted her to perform it the uh, another way. So apparently they recorded both. I don't know which performance wound up on the record, but he gifted her the song. It was a huge hit. And her voice and her intonation on it and her expressing her emotions through the song, it's just wonderful. There's so many good songs on this album. Great introduction to early 70s, really good funk rock, just wonderful. The next recording I used was this, Zero, from Zero, called Simple Things. Now. Zero is a kind of a chilled kind of post trip hop band, a couple of guys kind of DJing, but they make their own music. This is their debut album and it is absolutely fabulous. It's really interesting and it's a rewarding listen to. There's some wonderful vocals on it. Um, it's a duo of two guys, um, Harry Binns and Sam Hardiker, and they just mix all these diverse musical elements from you know, soul influence, like the first cut is a very soul influence uh, vocals in it. There's uh, classical string arrangements in it. There's all kinds of strings in it. It's just really wonderful. And it kind of winds up being this kind of swirling wave of sounds, you know, kind of fascinating bass lines, some wonderful bass lines, engaging soundscapes, just really kind of washes over you a little bit and involves you. And in your head, it is really, really remarkable. So the standout tracks on this one are, there are two tracks, two vocal tracks by Saya and Sophie Barker. And Sophie Barker has got an amazing voice called Destiny and In the Waiting Line. Oh my goodness, they are wonderful. And Sophie Barker, once you hear this, you'll want to go investigate. She's got some solo albums out. Really, really great vocal. Good song, really just entertaining and kind of, you know, more modern. Like I said, it's kind of that chilled, not really acid jazz, but you know, kind of trip hop, really good. I love it to death, it's really, really good. Now, I didn't do any classical for this particular one because I liked, I wanted to do stuff that was gonna live in my head and swirl around and really amaze me. So I used this wonderful recording from Lindsey Sterling. It's her first album called Lindsey Sterling. And Lindsey Sterling is a kind of, she's a violinist and she was kind of earned her fame as she was a quarter finalist on America's Got Talent playing this unique kind of uh, trip hop, dubstep, violin, just wonderful mix of all kinds of eclectic sounds. Just there's, there's classical, there's kind of country influences, there's modern dance. She dances while she plays the violin on, you know, on stage. Um, it just really is interesting. So there's kind of cinematic stuff. There's, again, there's just, it swirls around in your head. And that's the cool thing about it is there's always something going on in your head. And I, like I said, I'm, or I may not have said, I'm not a big headphone guy as far as like trying to figure out imaging. I just want it to be in my head. I want to have fun with it. I want to have it, you know, kind of, oh, cool. You know, going back and forth or whatever, front, front to back and all that stuff. And all of these, um, you know, the zero simple things and Lindsey Sterling stuff does it really, really well. So how do these sound? They're remarkable. I did a review of the FIO FT1s, very good close back. Again, at $150, an excellent close back, but a little bit boomy on the bass. I did the Hi-Fi-Man uh, uh, HE400 SEs, good planar magnetic. Again, not quite uh, in the same price category as this, but good and rewarding and, and reasonably transparent and detailed. These things take it to a different level as far as detail resolution, pulling subtle cues and microdynamics out of the recording, 
really good bass, very fast, very uh, nuanced. I could follow bass lines because a lot of these, you know, the, the, the Zero album, the Lindsey Sterling, there's a ton of bass going on in there. And again, it's electronic bass, so it's not really, there's not a lot of texture to it, but there's good power and there's good drive to it and very, very rewarding to listen to. So really good bass, really good mid-range. Um, all the way up through, vocals were excellent. Shaka Khan's vocals were just nuanced and beautiful. And, you know, you could hear breath and you could hear kind of just normal, you know, as you're moving your mouth kinds of sounds. You could hear when she was closer to the mic or a little further away. And all the other stuff, which is synthesizers, basically. And, of course, Lindsay's violin, when she's plucking that, the, the attack of the strings is just wonderful. Now, it's all being electronically processed. All of the imaging that's going on is manufactured in the studio. But I didn't care. Stuff was swimming around in my head, and I was just having a ball. So the Fio FT5s, so far to date, I, one of the absolute best headphones I've experienced. Now, I don't have a ton of experience, and I've got some more stuff coming. But these are a standout. And at $450, I would expect them to. Um, just really, really comfortable, well-designed, great sounding, easy to listen to. Just really highly recommend it. I really enjoyed my time with a few FT1s. And hopefully you enjoyed your time with me. And you'd be willing to give me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the window if you want to support the channel. You can also join the channel. There'll be a membership link in the pinned comment and in the video description. There will also be affiliate links to, uh, if you're interested in purchasing the FT5s, um, there are Amazon affiliate links uh, for other equipment that I use. They're my playlist and that's under construction. And I, I apologize, I owe you guys some new playlists and they're gonna be in there soon. It's just kind of hard to do when I'm trying to film as much as I am. And this happens to be the week I'm getting ready to leave for the Capital Audio Fest. So I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff done in a day. So I apologize, but I promise that will get better. Um, please comment, let me know. What kind of headphones do you like? What kind of sound do you like? Um, what are you using right now as your headphone rig? Um, you know, do you like tube headphone? Do you like solid state? Do you like, you know, uh, planar magnetic, dynamic, open back, closed back? You know, let me know what you think. Anyway, I, that's all I need to cover here. My name's Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel saying it's now time for you to sit back, put on a really comfortable pair of headphones, maybe like the Fio FT5s, and sit back and listen to some wonderful music and relax. Thank you so very much for your time. I'm grateful for it. Have a wonderful day.